Pokemon Ultra Sun and Moon are considered by many to be the hardest vanilla Pokemon games to Nuzlocke. With difficult omni-boosted totem Pokemon and trainers with maxed out IVs, EVs, and competitive movesets on their Pokemon. Despite this, today I will be attempting a hardcore Nuzlocke of Ultra Moon using only flying type Pokemon. On top of that, we will only be using shiny birds, adding a little bit of flair to the run. Quick disclaimer, I am playing on a modded version of the game that increases the odds to be similar of those in Pokemon Legends Arceus Outbreaks. The flying typing is a pretty diverse typing, and we get some pretty insane encounters in this game. Gyarados, Salamence, and even Big Deli Bird. Hopefully all of these broken Pokemon will carry us to the champion seat atop the Pokemon League. If you guys enjoyed today's video, be sure to consider liking and subscribing to the channel. Uh, I'm on my way to a thousand subs, and I'd really appreciate it if you helped us out along that goal. Alrighty, let's jump into it. Confession time. I, I forgot Rowlet was a flying type. Yeah, I know, Mr. Competitive Pokemon, Little Cup Extraordinaire, forgot the typing of Rowlet. I completely tell him was only thinking of Decidueye, who was a grass ghost typing. All this really means is that we forfeit an early encounter, as we would have had to box it soon anyways, and it probably would have been my first sack piece. But I thought it was worth mentioning and pretty funny. Now we can grab our de facto starter in Picky Peck, who we can name Fruit Loops. Fruit Loops has an awesome final shiny when it turns into two cannon. Can't wait to use it this run. <laughs> Ugh. After beating up on how we can move to the bottom half of Route 1 and find a shiny Wingle, we name Lucky Charms. A lot of Nuzlockers count the top and bottom half of this route as two different encounters because it's so large and because it gives us another encounter. I could have waited to grab this in Howley City, but that would have made the trainer school almost impossible. We catch our Wingle, who happens to actually have the hydration ability. This ability isn't great in its own right, but it does turn into Drizzle when it turns into Pelipper, which is phenomenal. We could skip past the trainer school, so it's pretty darn easy. You know what's not easy? Freaking Alima. This fight took me six resets before I could beat it with just Wingle and Picky Peck. In order to beat it, I had to use Growl on Wingle to weaken the young goose a ton before sending in my Picky Peck, getting off three workups, Okoing the young goose, and finally to Ikeoing the Smeargle. The reason this was so difficult was due to the fact that this setup took a ton of time, which meant I had to avoid a ton of crits. Even one crit meant an auto loss. Thankfully, on attempt six, we're able to pull through. On our way to the next trial, we can grab our third encounter in Raisin Brand the Spiro, who has the worst shiny we'll get in this entire playthrough. I cannot stand this ugly pea stain yellow color it has. But now we can finally take on our first trial versus the Lolan Raticate. We lead off with Picky Peck who throws off a mean brick break for 90%, unfortunately not taking it out due to its defense boost. Turn two, we're free to take out the Raticate with another brick break as long as we don't get flinched, of course. Its partner Rattata also throws off a big tail whip putting me in range of another hit. I could have switched out here, but if I got double attacked from the Pokemon coming in, it could have just been two it KO'd anyways. Unfortunately, it's our safest move just to let Picky Peck go down. RIP Fruit Loops. And honestly, Fruit Loops is a bottom three cereal, so I'm not too sad here. From here, Lucky Charm takes out the Raticate and Rattata, giving us our first Z Crystal. Prior to the next island trial, we can grab three more encounters. First up is Zubat, which we named Cheerios. Next up is Halucha, which we named Cocoa Puffs. And Halucha's dual typing is amazing, and it has a great speed tier as well. It's bound to be one of our best encounters by a long shot. Lastly, we grab Ori Kurio, who is going to be incredibly important this run. You'll see why later. We name him Frosted Flakes and get ready to take on Hala. This is one of the fights in this run that is mind-numbingly easy. I won't bore you guys with the turn by turn. I set up a bunch of home claws with Halucha and smashed through his entire team. Who would have thought that the fighting trial would be so easy for Mono Flying? After this, I went down to 10 Carat Hail and grabbed the Flying MZZ Crystal, which is obviously going to be great for this run. Now we can head off right to Akala Island. We go through some boring story stuff and mess up Gladium with our Halucha, evolve Spiro into Firo, and go to take on Totem Araquanid at Brooklet Heel. I taught Halucha Bounce from the Mantine Surf move tutors with the intention of using Z Bounce in the Araquanid, until I realized I forgot to equip the Z Crystal once I got into the battle. Uh oh. This makes things a bit more interesting. Instead of nuking it with a Z Bounce right off rip, I throw off a big aerial ace turn 1 and get a lucky crit for half damage. I then get hit by a strong rain and water boosted bubble for about half of my health as Maskrain gets called in and intimidates me. After this I pivot into Ori Kurio and get off a single HP flying to bring a rack one in into the red, but I also get brought super low. I'm now forced out into our newly evolved Firo, who takes a ton of damage, but thankfully due to our speed we still outpace even a plus one at rack one in and can take it out with an aerial ace. We then take out the Maskrain with an aerial ace giving us the watery Z, Z crystal in a battle that was much tougher than it should have been. 
After this, we can grab our next encounter in Surskit, name it Cornflakes, and evolve into Masquerain. We can also grab one more encounter before the file trial in Metapod and an eventual Butterfree. The trial versus Alola Marowak is notorious for being one of the most difficult trials in this game, and we wiped a few times here. On attempt 9, we had a much more solid plan to take this thing on. We lead off with Masquerain to get off and intimidate. Turn 1, we water support to weaken fire type attacks as Marowak uses to tact. After Salazzle gets called in, the next turn we throw off a big Waterium Z Bubble Beam to bring the Marowak to about 40%. I then pivot into my Firo to get off a Thief to steal its Thick Club, but Marowak goes for a Detect and Salazzle takes me out with a Venoshock. I then go into Wingle to take a Venoshock into Hex and survive on just 1 HP before getting off some Water Pulse Chip. My safest way of beating this now is going into Masquerade to get off another Intimidate before sacking it off to get a free switch from the gold back. After another Detect turn, Marowak burns me, making it so my Thief doesn't knock it out, but we at least get rid of its Thick Club. I then pivot into Ori Kurio to take out Marowak with an Air Cutter. From there, I go into Halucha, click Roost on the Salazzle and Encore lock it into Poison Gas, and take it out with a few area laces. Before our next trial, we can grab another Encounter in Fletchling, and then head up to the Lush Jungle. After our ordeal of ridiculous trials on Akala, we can finish it off with an easy one against Totem Lorantis. We make quick work of it with our Crobat and then start our preparations to take on the Rock Grand Trial. But first, more shiny birds! First we grab Archon, one of my favorite fossils and a Pokemon I've always wanted to use in a playthrough. Super excited for Cocoa Pebbles here. Then right before the Rock Trial, I grab a shiny Magikarp and eventual Gyarados. Captain Crunch here is sure to be the best Pokemon in this run, here to Dragon Dance us to the Elite Four. I even have a cool plan for him to beat Olivia in one fell swoop. I start the battle versus Olivia and immediately go for the Normalium Z Splash, which actually boosts my attack by three stages. After taking two smackdowns, I take out Anorth the Bulldoze. Next up is Leap who goes down to an Ice Fang. Lycanroc comes out next and all we have to do is click Bulldo- What? It outsped? This is 100% on me, but I just assumed Gyarados would outspeed. My laziness costs us what's potentially our best encounter this run. It's fine though, because we can just go Halucha and Encore this thing into fight as he moves go through Encore. Another stupid mistake by me, and Halucha gets nuked by a Rockinium Z. Our next best team member also down for the count. Thankfully, Pelipper can come in and 2 it KO the Lycanroc with rain boosted waterfalls, but this battle was incredibly sloppy by me. Time to tighten up. Our next huge fight is against the rock type Ultra Beast and Neolego at Aether Paradise. This thing has the potential to Oko our entire team. I have a foolproof plan though. I lead Crobat and... Run the hell away. You thought I was gonna fight that thing? From here on, we go to Ulu Ulu Island and have our first tough Howl fight. He now has an Alolan Raichu that we can't use the Neolego strat on. So we need a plan and need one fast. This is where Ori Kurio comes in to shine. We lead with it against his Toracat and start spamming Feather Dance. After weakening the Torgat, we set up four workups and Baton Pass into our Crobat, who we have a Lumberry equipped to it in case he gets burned by Fire Fang. From here, our boost allows us to Oko Hop's entire team with Croc. Did I just say Hop and not How? How? I, I don't know why I always get them confused. We Oko How's entire team with Cross Poison. Before we face what's arguably our hardest trial yet, we can grab two more encounters in Skarmory, who will be incredibly important for us as a rock neutral mom, and Minior, who has the ability to just win games with Shell Smash. It also has an amazing shiny. Gotta be my favorite of the entire run. All right, time to cheese Togo tomorrow. We have a very similar plan for Togi D as we did for How. We start off by leading Ori Kurio and getting a workup off as Togo tomorrow's spiky shields. After this, we alternate Feather Dance, Roost, and workups until we can baton pass our boost into Crobat, whose hidden power typing is thankfully ground. With our boost and a Saw Sand equipped, we can easily Oko the Togo tomorrow. Then we can use Fletcher to beat Skarmory, getting us a clean victory over the Electric Trial. Before our next trial, we get a new evolution as Fletcher finally evolves into the speedy and powerful Talonflame. Next up is the Spooky Ghost Trial. Mimikyu is a huge threat with its disguise ability and its stat boost, but Skarmory should come out clutch here. We lead Ori Kurio and take a ton from Player Off, but then we get a clutch Feather Dance off. After roost a few turns, I pivot into our Archon who can take out the Banette with a crunch. I did this before going Skarm to ensure it did not get burned or cursed by the Banette. From here, I go into Skarmory to break down the Mimikyu with Steel Wings and Roost to stay healthy. I like to also set up spikes in the Mimikyu's face for the soon incoming Jellicent. As at this point, I saw crit damage wasn't too high and I wasn't too scared of the Mimikyu. After Mimikyu goes down, it's a slow grind, but we eventually take out the Jellicent with Aerial Aces. After this trial, Arkin finally evolves into Arceops, and he and Cheerios, the Crobat, take care of Plumeria and her Golbat plus Salazzle combo. 
After this, we mow through Poe Town and Team Skull to find out Lily has been whisked away to Aether Paradise by Team Skull along with her Cosmog. Before I can go and save her, I need to defeat the Dark Grand Trial and Nanu who has three Pokemon, two of which know Power Gem for some reason. He leads off with Sableye and I like to get up a spike as Shadow Ball does a ton to Skarm. From here, I pivot into Crobat and hit the Sableye with a huge Flyanium Z, bringing it low into the red, as he just brings me to 22 HP with a Power Gem. I U-turn out as Nanu heals his Sableye and go into my Archeops to take it out with an Acrobatics. Unfortunately, this brings in Alolan Persian, who wrecks me. After I take a fake out, I realize I forgot to put U-turn on Archeops, essentially forcing me into a stack. I decide to lower its speed with Bulldoze so that I can revenge with another member, but of course, our gem crits. We guaranteed live that, by the way. This forces another sack guaranteed. I go into my Ori Korea and get off a Revelation Dance just to have to sack Crobat the subsequent turn. I then go into Pelipper and get crit again by Power Gem, but thankfully we live this one on 5 HP and take out the Persian. After this, Skarmory was able to stall out his Croc Rock with the help of Talflame, getting us our trial victory, but at a huge price. For this next portion of the video, the layout is incorrect. I have no idea what happened in OBS, but it gets fixed soon after the Aether Paradise section. Sorry about that. This portion of the game was going pretty smoothly as well, until we went into a forced double battle I had no idea about. This is extra unfortunate as they lead Electabuzz and Magmar as I was leaving Skarmory in preparation for the Fable battle after. This forced me into my Oric Rio, which was subsequently screeched and double targeted Okode by the two Pokemon the next turn. This is a huge loss as this is how I planned on being the Vike Vault Guzma has. The subsequent Fable battle was easy, so let's jump right into the Guzma fight. I hadn't shown any of my Guzma fights up to this point because they were just easier versions of this. This one had a Vikavolt and was much scarier. For this battle, I lead off with my Minior as I power gen the Glizzapod, forcing it out due to emergency exit. This led in Pinsir, who has Stone Edge. To avoid a crit Oko, I went into Skarmory and proceeded to PP stall the Pinsir out of Stone Edges and got off a Toxic. From here, I was able to go Minior, Shell Smash up, and Oko Guzma's entire team with power gem outside of Glissapod, who I switched out on in Fear of Sucker Punch. Next big fight is Lucimeme, but before this I went and grabbed a shiny Delibird that we skipped earlier on. He'll be very important later. We also picked up shiny Mantike and evolved it into Mantine with the help of a Remoraid. But Owen, Remoraid isn't a flying type nor is it shiny. Meh meh meh, I wanted to use Mantine and I'm not running through the endgame with a Mantike. Sue me. Lucimeme herself wasn't very hard. We led good old Butterfree who recently learned Quiver Dance. Despite Butterfree sucking, Quiver allowed it to set up all over Clefable and sweep her entire team. On to Pony Island. In Seafolk Village, we can soft reset for our second to last encounter in Aerodactyl, another really cool flying and rock type. I wish we still had Archaeops though. We had to proceed through this area incredibly carefully. At this point, a ton of the trainers have max IV and EV Pokemon. There's a gauntlet of trainers in front of the Komoo trial that's particularly challenging, with threats like Alolan Graveler, Lapras, Glaceon, Slowking, and Gengar, which all give our team major trouble. Thankfully, we made through a Deathless. Komoo was pretty easily handled by our Toxic Protect Roost Skarmory. I know a lot of people don't like Toxic Stall and Nuzlocks, but I only really take that from someone who's beaten this game in a hardcore Nuzlocke setting without using Toxic Stall. From here, I go back to Melee Melee Island and grab my last encounter in Bagon and an eventual Salamence. This is going to be our end game carry. I just didn't bother getting him until now because the level cap didn't allow us to use him. It's also a bonus that this is my favorite Pokemon of all time. On the Altar of the Moon, the Cosmo fused with Lunala, so we had to take it on. Turn 1, I try to Toxic it, and of course I miss. This puts me in a spot where I eventually need to pivot into Arrow, get off some crunch damage, and sack it off just to revenge with Salamence. None of this would have happened if I hit that initial Toxic. Maybe this is punishment for Toxic stalling, who knows. Anyone want to guess how I beat Ultra Necrozma? 3, 2, 1, say it with me, Toxic Stall. We gave our Sacrificial Lamb Delibird a Focus Sash and Toxic plus Protect. After it went down, we were able to go Butterfree, get off a of Protect, also go down, then go into Skarmory to finish off with one more Protect. Like I said, look at my team and tell me a better strat here. Nothing? Alright, let's move on. Last up, we have to buy a battle a few Trial Captains before we can take on Totem Rabombi. I completely lost my footage for this one, so I'll leave it up to my lovely editor to throw some scuffed funny graphic on the screen. Turn 1, I lead Skarmory and get a fatty Toxic off. After a Protect and an Aerial Ace, I pivot into Mantine and Protect and Roost until Rabombi goes down. Mantine is a Spadef monster. After this, Mantine stalls out the Pelipper and we complete our final trial. Now it's time to take on the Elite Four, after some preparations and item acquiring, of course. We start off with who I think will be the easiest of the Elite Four and the Flying Leader, Kikili. My plan was just to lead off with Minior, Shell Smash, and win. The only problem is that our rock-covered form that we are in 
is much weaker than our Meteor form and Braviary isn't strong enough to knock us below half to have us change forms. After knocking it out and Okoing Halucho with Rocky MZ, I figured we still had enough power to knock out Mandibus, and I calced and saw that it did indeed knock it out. I don't know what I did wrong in the calc, but we came nowhere near close to Okoing it and died to a punishment. A move that does more damage the more boost a Pokemon has. Pig. Yikes. Mens came out next to KO the Mandy with Dragon Claw. Next up was Toucanon, and I went into Skarmory just to realize I forgot to put Toxic back on for this fight, and I had Spikes still. This made me have to pivot around this thing like crazy, and my mons took a ton of chip before I could take it out with Salamence. Next up was Fire Ori Kareo, who we beat down with Mantine, giving us the win, proving that we are indeed the best flying type trainer in Alola. Next up I took on Mulane and his Steel types. I led Skarmory and got up 3 layers of spikes in the Klefki to break sturdy on Magnezone and chip her team into range of our coverage move. I then pivoted Mantine to chip down the Klefki with Scalds, before pivoting the Talonflame on a Flash Cannon. The Klefki then tried to Thunder Wave me, but I equipped a Lumbear and shook it off and Flame Charge for an Oko. Next up was Magnezone, which I am not messing around with, so I make it drop to a Flare Blitz after Spikes damage. Metagross was next, so I pivoted from Skarmory into Ments and threw off a big Groudium Z Bulldoze, just missing out on KO. Knowing a heal was coming up next, I went into Pelipper to beat down the Metagross with Scald, plus Roost, and Protect. Next up was Bisharp, who we also 1v1 with the same exact moves, and lastly was Alolan Doug Trio, which went down to a single Scald, netting us the win versus the Steel Elite 4 member. Next up was Olivia and her Rock types. I once again led Skarm and got up 3 layers of spikes while alternating Roost in front of her Maldo. From there, I 1v1'd it with Toxic and Steel Wing. Next up was Gigalith, who suffered the same fate. Next up was Lycanroc, who we got super low with Steel Wings before it used Counter to bring us very low. I thought I had stalled out of its Stone Edges at that point, so I went in immense, but I miscounted and took a potential huge hit. Thankfully, our Intimidate plus Charty Berry weakened the blow. And there we knocked out with a Brick Break, as well as a Proba Bass. Lastly was Cradily, who was taken down by the combination of Mence and Pelipper. One more left. Ace Roller and Ghost didn't prove to be too difficult. We led Specs Pelipper and Okoed Bonnet and did a ton of damage to the huge threat Floss last after a Blizzard and a Confusion hit. We were left pretty low, so we pivoted into Talonflame, who took it out with a Flame Charge. And then went Skarmory on Delmize, got a Toxic off, then went Mantine to stall out the Delmize. Next up was Palisand, who Mantine made quick work of. Lastly was Driftblim, who was taken out by Salamence by Ghost DMZ Shadow Claw into a few regular Shadow Claws after a heal. All that's left now is the Champion. We led Lumberry Salamence to counter his lead Alolan Raichu. We were Lum in case it paired us with T-Bolt. Turn 1 I bulldozed to lower its speed, as we took a ton from T-Bolt. For some reason, he switched out into Leafeon the next turn, so I took this opportunity to roost up, then pivot around until Leafeon went down to burn from Town from Flame Body as I was in with Skarm. Funny enough, they switched into Crabominable before they could go down, which was great as this is the only member of my team that could take that thing on. I got a Toxic off with Skarmory and stalled it down with Roost and Steel Wing. Next up is Incineroar, so I went hard into Pelipper on Inferno Overdrive and then 1v1'd it with Scald. Lolan Raichu came out next, and I don't have a switch in this thing, so I'm forced to sack off Pelipper to get a clean Salamence switch. I knocked out the Raichu with the Bulldoze as Crab came back in for some reason, so I took it out with a Brick Break. Out then goes Noivern, who is stalled out easily by Mantine. Then lastly is Tauros, who we got a Toxic off on, and then stalled out easy with Skarmory. And just like that, we beat a Pokemon Ultra Moon Hardcore Nuzlocke using only shiny flying types. We definitely could have played this cleaner, but I'm super proud of this run and had a ton of fun playing it. I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as me, and if you did, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel for more content just like this. Uh, and definitely let me know what run you'd like to see next in the comments down below. Thank you guys again for watching, I'll see you guys next time. Later.